So, what's up, Kentucky? Uh, April 5th, 2015, Sunday, Easter, which is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring March equinox. So, happy first Sunday after the first full moon after the first March equinox. Um, uh, I want to actually some Mitch Hedberg, um, quotes, uh, he said, I used to do drugs, I still do, but I used to too, and he also talks about how he orders the club sandwich all the time, I order the club sandwich all the time, and I'm not even a member, man, I don't know how to get away with it, beware of any comedian who writes for half an hour and then tells you they have 30 minutes of new material, so anyways, that's, uh, let's get serious for a second. Enough playing around. Um, I have lots of things I need to talk about. So, uh, first of all, you know, some people be like, oh, you're wearing the wrong shirt. Well, I'm Kentucky through and through, so Louisville is just as important as Lexington, Cummington, Newport, Bellevue, uh, Dayton, Bowling Green, uh, Pikeville, right? It, just as important. It's whatever is in, you know, the boundaries of Kentucky. Everything that's in the boundaries of Kentucky I think is the greatest thing in the world, okay? So, uh, I guess my Kentucky nationalism has been uh, pretty brainwashed through and through. But if we want to get serious, you know, the I don't even care for Patino. I think, shake things up. Let's get a new coach in there. Um, I didn't like what he did with Shane Behannon just because of uh, cannabis. So, you know, they want to sit there, the whole U of L and UK thing with all the basketball programs. Um UK just got $135 million in order to uh, cure cancer. Cannabis cures cancer. So there it is. There's a cure right there. You don't even have to spend $135 million. But if you want to talk about uh, actual, because U, U of L and UK are, you know, premier research institutions. So really, their basketball programs um, are pretty much separate, you know, from what they're actually trying to do. They're, you know, intellectuals, they're smart people, they're uh, scientists, doctors, biologists, engineers, right? This is what, uh, this is what our universities are supposed to be for. So when it comes to U of L, we've actually, U of L, I graduated U of L. So, you know, I'm, I have to be partial to my alma mater, but you have, um, the first hand transplant. Right, so if there's something wrong with your hand and you had to get a you know a transplant um, done, that was that first happened in UK. It was in 1999. The first heart transplant. If you need a new heart, right? Boop, 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 boop. That's U of L. That came out of U of L. Uh, 1984. It was U of L physicians at uh, Jewish Hospital. I also heard that the the first emergency room and EMS ambulance services was in Louisville in 1911. I've heard of it, but I didn't do too much uh, research into it. Also, Louisville itself, the first enamel bathtub, bubble gum, cheeseburger. I um, also heard those are the first uh, to do those things, too. Um, but I want to see. So U of L, if you want to get serious, U of L is a premier research institution. So what is it that it, you know, what are our uh, colleges and universities actually producing? Basketball is fine. It's entertaining. It's sports. But, you know, the, the actual university, the actual college needs to be, you know, doing, you know, hand transplants, first heart transplants. So if you hate, you know, the Cardinals, who I hate the Cardinals, that means you hate the hand transplants and heart transplants, uh, EMS. Um, emergency room, bad tubs, bubble gum, cheeseburgers. Get out of here. You know, I think uh, we should give credit where credit is due. Layman Gray Jr., the head of the thoracic and cardiovascular surgery at University of Louisville Hospital, performed the state's first transplant on 40-year-old Alice Brandenburg of Louisville in August 1984. So, you know, first um, transplant, right? Cardiovascular, so the first cardio that's the first heart transplant. And now Gray is the executive and medical director at the Cardiovascular Innovation Institute. And so, you know, she is still there. You want to learn some, you know, the University of Louisville School of Medicine has, you know, some incredibly nationalized, recognized um, uh, accomplishments. They developed the first ever cancer vaccine. In 2006, we have a vaccine for cancer. Well, 2006, that means it's nine years old. How come we're all not getting inoculated? They found the first cancer vaccine, the first implementation of the first fully self-contained artificial heart. 
right? The heart transplant, the first successful hand transplant in the world, the first five hand transplant in the United States and nine hand transplants and eight recipients as of 2008. The first discovery of embryonic-like stem cells in adult human bone marrow. And the first proof that adult nasal stem cells can grow to become other types of cells. Um, so, you know, uh, the U.S. News and World Report ranked the University of Louisville School of Medicine 76 in research in its annual list of best medical schools in the United States. Cosair Children's Hospital ranked amongst the top 50 children's hospitals. You know, these are good things. These are incredible things. So when you think of the University of Louisville, I hope you just don't think about, you know, the Cardinal basketball team, of which only one person was from Kentucky. One person in UK on the basketball team was from Kentucky. So we're not even elevating Kentucky people. It's nice entertainment, right? You can be entertained by whatever you want to be entertained by. Um, but if you want to get serious, well, what does the actual university do? You know, um, yeah, they play basketball every once in a while, but, you know, they're supposed to be research institutions. So, you know, it's weird um, that Kentucky has the amount of issues that we have when we have, you know, institutions or universities, colleges. Uh, you would think that the universities or colleges would have thought a way to eradicate poverty a long time ago or to figure out some of the engineers could figure out how to get running water into Appalachia. Or maybe Frankfurt. Or maybe somebody else could be thinking about some of this stuff. You know, they're sitting on coal. They're beggars sitting on the mountains of gold. And somehow, you know, people go without running water. Including your, yours truly. I take a bucket. I dip a, a bucket in the cistern. And then heat the water up on a hot plate. And then, you know, bathe myself by bucket. So anyways, UofL uh, School of Medicine is amazing. It's incredible. The first hand transplant to achieve prolonged success was directed by a, a team of Kleiner Cuts hand care surgeons, including Warren C. Bre uh, Breedenbach and Sumin Sai in cooperation with the Christine M. Kleiner Institute Jewish Hospital in the University of Louisville in Louisville, Kentucky. So first hand transplant, first heart transplant. Um, the procedure was performed on New Jersey native Matthew Scott on January 14th, 1999. This 16 years ago. This just happened, right? So, hand transplant. Then he got his, uh, lost his hand in a fireworks accident at age 24. Later in 1999, the Philadelphia Phillies baseball team asked him to do the honors of throwing out the, the ceremonial first pitch. So, you know, later that year, he got a new hand in January, and then, you know, later on that same year, he's pitching a baseball uh, into, you know, um, from the pitcher's mound to, to the catcher. The Louisville group went on to perform the first five hand transplants in the United States and had performed nine hand transplants and eight recipients. Nine hand transplants and eight recipients. I don't know if something went wrong, but as of 2008, there's been several hand transplants. So this is remarkable medicine. That's some incredible progress. You know, that's something that we should all be collectively proud of. Not only if our basketball team wins the championship, which, you know, UK won the last year and then the U of L had won the year before. I think they won last year. I don't know. It was two years in a row, right? So we have really great basketball teams. If we could focus on poverty as much as we focused on basketball, we would be able to eradicate poverty in five, ten years at the most, five years at the least, if we actually put that much attention into it. Um, you know, but uh, if you're not poor, then you don't really care, right? And uh, if we don't have people, that's actually, I guess poor people have to learn to organize themselves. Um, ourselves, we gotta learn to organize ourselves. So, Layman Gray, MD, he's, uh, you know, the Jewish hospital chair in cardiovascular surgery, still working at, uh, UofL, go check him out, you know, uh, the first heart transplant in Kentucky, it was 1984, and then he also did the first bridge to heart transplant after the use of a theoretic by uh, ventricular assist device in the United States, which is harder to say than the first heart transplant, but, that's, I'm sure, a, you know, notable achievement, too. The first bridge to heart transplant after the use of a thoracic biventricular assist device in the United States, 1985. Um, my, uh, the first libertarian candidate for sheriff is Ronnie Lee Smith. The way people become distinguished, the way they become notable is, you know, there's lots of different ways to become distinguished. Uh, but Layman Gray, MD, I think that's an incredible way to become the first heart transplant. Can you imagine, you know, till the day he dies, he could say that he had the first heart transplant, the first successful, um, you know, long-term heart transplant. 
So, uh, that's just, uh, you know, UK lost last night, and um, that was a Final Four. So there's only one more game left. So close. Uh, they made it farther than UofL. When UofL lost, that was pulling for UK. Um, uh, but uh, they didn't win. So now, now it's time to get serious, right? Now it's time to look at um, uh, Kentucky politics. Right now you have a governor's race that's going on. You have eight candidates that's in the race. You have a treasurer's race, a secretary of state race, and a commissioner of agriculture race. And so um, let's actually... Uh, go through those, and then I got some, you know, news headlines coming up after this. But for right now, look, we're gonna we're gonna do some learning, okay? In fact, I think I'm gonna even take notes while I'm speaking here. I get this from Ballotpedia, uh, Kentucky State Executive Official Elections 2015. You got Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Commissioner of Agriculture, Treasurer, Attorney General, Secretary of State, and Auditor. So right now you have. Um, you know, there's the primary, which happens in May. That's when the Democrats amongst themselves choose who they want uh, to be their candidate. And then the general election, where it's the Democrats versus the Republicans. Now, you also got some independents that jump in there. So, there, you know, there's some... Um, uh, and, and that's good. I think we should have way more than just a two-party uh, dictatorship. Uh, but, you know, this is this is how the system is now. So you got the primaries first, and then you got the general election. So when it comes to the state auditor's race... You don't need to even learn about it. Don't even read about it. When it comes to May 19th, uh, if you're a Democrat, Adam Edelin is already in there. He's going to win the Democratic nomination. And then Mike Harmon. Mike Harmon is the Republican nomination. So that's going to be a race that we're going to have to check out in November. We're going to have to take a look at who this Mike Harmon guy is and Adam Edelin. Adam Edelin's been in there. He did a uh, audit actually in my hometown school, which I was uh, very proud of. And so um, I think it's a good thing, right? You, you get an outsider uh, perspective in uh, how the finances are being dealt. And, um, you know, you could straighten some things out. They're saving millions now. And um, and so I like that. I like that, uh, you know, all you have to do is just threaten an audit. And then people are like, okay, okay, chill out. No need to get an audit. And um, and so the auditor's race, when it comes to the primaries, we don't need to worry about it. But the primaries is just, you know, a month and a half away. We've already been in the campaign for over a month now. And, you know, the media hasn't been talking about, you know, the races at all. They haven't even, there's 120 new laws that Frankfurt has passed. They haven't even barely brushed on it. So when it comes to actual politics and what's going on, the media is just completely dropping the ball. There's 120 new laws, including the legalization of fracking, including the allowing tow truck drivers to steal the stuff out of your car. Um, and, uh, the, the right to let, uh, mental health workers beat the crap out of their, in, you know, their inmates and some other really stupid laws, just really stupid things that, you know, it's like, you could tell it's like some buddy, buddy stuff. I'll pass your bill if you pass my bill. And, uh, and then you get these weird, you know, sort of, uh, Frankenstein, um, hypocritical sort of, you know, uh, uh, piecemeal, you know, just kind of messed up, you know, like the heroin bill, right? We're going to make harsher laws and throw you in prison unless your friend overdoses and you call them in, and then you're totally free and clear. And if you want some needles, here's some needles. So, you know, the, uh, I, um, I think those, you know, the, those two provisions are in a step in the right direction, but that doesn't, uh, matter. It's uh, the fact that the media has not been paying attention. So that's why we're talking about, you know, these races right now. The governor's race, att attorney general's race, secretary of state, auditor, treasurer, commissioner of agriculture. So in general, uh, you know, we probably should also just know what these positions do. The governor's position is like one of the strongest positions in the state. And I'm going to talk about the positions of the governor. And I'll talk about the positions of the governor after I talk about the um, uh, the news items. Um, but, you know, let's just read down. Okay, so Lieutenant Governor, right? You know, I got some headlines and stuff, so maybe people that are paying attention might know about me, but I'm mostly a newcomer, Sandy Overleaf. I mean, I think actually when it comes to a 13% in 2012 and 13, there's a 13% turnout rate. So really, either we're all newcomers or they're all, I don't know, 13 is just such a small number. You don't know if they're all paying attention or they're just doing their duty. They're um, considered low information voters, so you don't need that much information in order to go vote. You know, you just need one little tiny piece of information. Um, so the other lieutenant governor candidates, there are eight candidates right now. So there are seven other lieutenant governor candidates. And if I'm the only person that you know, well, that's intentional, you know. Um, in fact, it almost seems like the way that they treated Gatewood Gabbroth is you should run as a blank slate. 
right? Just uh, be smiling and schmooze and just say, I like you, you're good, I like this, I like that, I like that, and say nothing about your issues or policies or what kind of governor you're going to be. Um, just smile and give them the fake, you know, hey, uh, there you are, that's you over there. And, um, and so, you know, I want an actual conversation. So, Treasure, there's a, a Republican that's running for Treasure who says he's going to abolish the office as soon as he gets in there. John Larson, I think. As soon as he gets in the office, he says he's just going to step down. Well, that's three Republicans. If you're a Republican, and by a month and a half from now, you're going to need to make a decision between Allison Ball, Kenny Imes, and John Larson. John Larson says we don't even need a treasurer's position. Now, some of these other guys have defended the treasurer's position, saying that they're a good um, oversight. They have accountability to the office. And there's five candidates. You know, there are, there are five candidates um, uh, for the Democrats. So if you're a Democrat, you have to study up on these five candidates to see which one you think is going to be the best. We only have a month and a half in order to, you know, see through all these candidates. And uh, KET's online, and, you know, you can find out that way. And really, I mean, we do need a stronger civic society, people that, you know, I mean, I kind of live and breathe this stuff, but that's sort of, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't need like an illusion. There's, you know, there's things that need to be fixed. And so we need to go fix them. And, uh, sometimes, you know, hardship and tragedy, you just want to kind of ignore it and just kind of, but I mean, if it's there, it's there and it needs to be dealt with. So treasure, you know, that's something that the uh, Neville Blakemore, James Glenn Jr., Daniel Grossberg, um, who's the president of the young Democrats out of Louisville. I think I like him the best. Richard Henderson and Rick Nelson. Now, Neville Blakemore and Rick Nelson, I have heard here and there a little bit. James, I've heard of all of these a little bit here and there. Um, but actually, who they are, what they stand for, what kind of candidate they will be, I don't know. I have no idea. Commissioner of Agriculture is uh, the Democrat nomination is Jean Marie Lawson Spann. It's already there. It's locked in. So for Democrats, all the Democrats have to study is the governor's race, the treasurer's race, and the secretary of state's race. That's all they got to worry about. If you're a Republican, you have four races that you actually got to focus on. The treasurer, the commissioner of agriculture, and the attorney general, and the governor's race. So that's four positions. Those are four races you got to pay attention to. So you actually got one more competitive race more than the Democrats. So that you have a little bit more options. Um, uh, Andy Brashear is the, you know, is going to be the attorney general. And then Jean Marie Lawson Spann is the nominee for the commissioner of agriculture. And Adam Edelin is the auditor. So we actually already got three Democrats, um, that, that's secured in their nominations. Uh, so, you know, uh, if nothing else changes, I'm going to vote for Andy Brashear, Adam Edelin, and Jean-Marie Lawson Span. And, uh, because I assume, not, not just because they're Democrats, but because I assume the Democrat mean that they're more progressive. Now, you know, if Richard Heath or Ryan Quarles or Mike Harmon or, uh, Michael T. Hogan or Whitney Westerfield, if any of them have more progressive ideas, you know, I'd consider it, but I'm guessing that they don't. So, uh, my vote already goes for Andy Brashear, Adam Edelin, and Jean-Marie Lawson Spann. But when it comes to the Secretary of State, I got Allison Grimes and Charles Lovett. I'm I'm in love with Allison Grimes. I uh, you know um, I think she's a queen maker, and I'm glad that she had a high profile race against Mitch McConnell because the Frankfurt almost lost the house. But it kind of shows you the nature of the Kentucky Democratic Party. They're not. I mean, I've been a Democrat for 15 years, and they have not been able to you know get me into the party. It's like if you care about poor people, if you want to change the world, the Democrats don't even want to talk to you. And I think that's absolutely backwards. Uh, the Democratic Party should be the ones that's getting new registered people in there. They should be the ones that's energizing the base and getting new folks. You know, that's what the Democrats are typically known for, especially the poor people. The fact that Jack Conway, you know, not just a patriot act in the war on drugs, but he voted for the Bush tax cuts. The Bush tax cuts. He's for the rich. And he kind of cares about the unions. Kind of. Not as much as Jeff Young and I do, but he kind of, I think we should pass the Kentucky Free Choice Act. We should preempt the uh, right to work, you know, bullshit and just pass the Kentucky Employment Free Choice Act and get that passed and then everybody has an option to be a part of the union. Unions are at 9%. So what do you got to opt out at unions right now? That doesn't affect anybody. Um, but I think you should have an opt out plan once you've been able to opt in. So every employment, you know, 25 employees or over should have an election of whether they want to unionize or not. 
and then that vote stands. If they say yes, they get a union. If they say no, there is no union. So that would be the Kentucky Employment Free Choice Act. I would be in favor of that. Now, I don't know if uh, the AFL-CIO and if, uh, um, you know, Yarmouth, John Yarmouth, I guess they don't like that. They don't like the unions. They don't like labor movement. But I think that's essential. It's going to be about the economics. It's all about the economics. And it's not just about bringing corporations into Kentucky. That's a part of it, but it's one small part of it. We can't wait for, you know, you think Walmart, if Walmart just came in here everywhere, we would all, that they would save us. Walmart would give us a bunch of, you know, minimum wage jobs, and that would help some of us, but that doesn't help all of us. And then, frankly, you know, it's a minimum wage job. What helps us better is if we can actually develop ourselves, small business, entrepreneurs, start our own things. Um, you know, industry has one role. Uh, corporations, steel plant, NAS, just like expanded, you know, millions of dollars, 150 million expansion, million dollar expansion. So that's, uh, you know, that's really good. That's a great industry. And so that provides really good jobs. And, uh, but that's only one part of it, right? You, we got to develop ourselves. Some, not everybody has, you know, a uh, manufacturing base, uh, around. In fact, it's, you know, it's kind of slipping, but it's still here. So we need to protect that still here, but we also need to work on the next, you know, the next step. There is outsourcing. And so, you know, uh, the Chinese people and Mexican people can put together all these, you know, um, iPhones and tennis shoes so much cheaper, um, than what an American will do. So either we have to, uh, start building stuff here and accepting that we're not going to make as good stuff and it's going to cost a little bit more or we're going to have to just develop the next you know the next step and evolve um where do we go from here so that's um that's uh, uh jack conway and jeff young are the two democrats so we have two democratic candidates and then you got sandy overly and Jen, you know uh yours truly johnny masters um who's running with jeff young and so with jeff young um, and Jack Conway, you only have two choices if you're a Democrat. If you're a Republican, you got four choices. And the, you know, that's Matt Bevin, James Comer, Will T. Scott, Hal Heiner. I've already got those names memorized. I've, I've actually seen them speak. I've talked to them a little bit. Um, the Lieutenant Governor candidates, Janine M. Hampton, Chris McDaniel, Rodney Coffey, Casey Crosby. Do you, Kentucky, do you know these people? Do you know any of those people? I'll read their names again. Janine Hampton. Chris McDaniel, Rodney Coffey, and Casey Crosby. Do you even know Sandy Overly? I mean, she's like the head, the the caucus, the head of the you know of the Democratic House, uh, Democrat caucus. So she's actually like you know pretty high up on the echelons of power um, in Frankfurt. And then you know, and then you know Jeff and me. But I think my point is that it's not just me. That there's six other, you know, there's uh, five other candidates that's Republican and Democrat. And then you got two independents. You got Drew Curtis, Drew and Heather Curtis, who's running as a husband wife team. And I bet you you're gonna see it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna see um, they're gonna surprise you if if they want to discount them like they're not gonna get any votes. They're gonna get some votes. Um, that other guy just jumped in, the guy who's Gatewood Galbraith for now, and then he's gonna change it back afterwards. I, I he's making a mockery really. Of um, changing your name, you if you change your name, you should have a legitimate reason, and it should be like you know forever. You should become Muhammad Ali, Ashley Judd, um, or Gerald Ford. You know that's who your name is, and then you just stick with it. With that, you can't be playing, and then you are prostituting the name. You know you're you know he says that he wanted to warm up Gatewood's grave, so you know I respect him for that. He got headlines, and then people were talking about Gatewood again, so that's all good stuff. But the fact that he's going to change it back. You know, after the election, I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting. I guess we'll see what name that he has to get 5,000 signatures. So we'll actually see if he's able to get those signatures. If he's able to get those signatures, then, you know, congratulations to him. And, um, and so he'll be on the ballot come November, but he won't be on the ballot come the primary. So the primary is May 19, 2015. If you're a Democrat or a Republican, you got some options. You got some choices. If you're not a Democrat or Republican, you have no choices. You have no options. Um, yeah, the Democrats can only vote for the Democrats in the Democratic primary and the Republicans can only vote for the Republicans in the Republican primary primary and then the general election is where everybody can go vote for anybody that they want to democrat um a republican independent working um class party you know green party whatever no nothing party uh american party whatever you know third party peace and freedom party um is out there 
So, you know, there's uh, options. There's three uh, major competitive races for the Democrats, and then there are four major competitive races for the Republicans coming up on May the 19th. It is Kentucky's media's job to inform you of all these candidates to let you know where they stand and, uh, and to, you know, to, to comprehensive show you the whole picture of who they are, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of treasurer Daniel Grossberg will be, or what kind of commissioner of agriculture Ryan Quarles will be. Uh, Whitney Westerfield, is she going to be a good attorney general? What is Whitney Westerfield's position on being attorney general, right? Or Michael T. Hogan, or, or um, uh, Will T. Scott, right? So, you know, uh, with um, the Secretary of State, I don't m know much about Charles Lovett. I really like Allison Grimes. She was able to get a lot of things modernized and passed, and I think we would have lost the House if she hadn't run. Um, I wish she was more progressive, or maybe she just didn't, you know, she's, I don't know, she could have voted for John McCain, and, uh, if she voted for John McCain, and then I think that's really despicable, um, if she just didn't say, you know, Obama's name so they couldn't use an advertisement, then that's, uh, that's a little bit differently, um, but, you know, that's, uh, I like, I like her positions on a lot of different things, I don't like that she's endorsed Jack Conway blindly, it makes me want to endorse Charles Lovett, um, Jeff Young has already endorsed Charles Lovett, and, um, you know, I need to know who Charles Lovett is a little bit more before I would even, even consider him. Right now, Allison has my, uh, vote in that race. And then the treasurer, I'd say Daniel Grossberg has my vote. Neville Blakemore, James Glenn, Henderson, Rick Nelson, I think I like all of them. And I would love to watch that debate because I think it'd be very informative to see. Because, I mean, John Larson's position is saying he's gonna abolish the seat. And I bet he could get elected. I bet there's enough Republicans that's so anti-government they'll vote for him him in just to, you know, shrink government. Uh, you know, like uh, so small you could drown it in a bathtub. So John Larson is, um, you know, basically saying, what's the point of having a treasurer? So now all these other guys have to sit there and say why you need a treasurer. In fact, actually, you should actually defend. Why do we need an auditor and state, you know, secretary of state? Secretary of state are the ones that, you know, deal with the elections. And actually, there's a whole bunch of um, responsibilities for each one of these. So, I mean, the, 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 the civics, there's an education factor there. You know, I think in the education system, we should be taught what the auditor, secretary of state, attorney general, treasurer, commissioner of agriculture, which I guess is the, the farms, right? He's got to deal with the farms. And then the auditor, I guess, goes around auditing people. Attorney general interprets the laws. Governor is like the king, the king of Kentucky. Lieutenant governor is like basically a sinecure, but uh, if the governor dies, which has never happened in any, you, you know, ever in all 50 states and all of history, the governor, there's only been one governor that was shot, and actually that was in Kentucky in 1900. Um, so it's mostly a sinecure position. I got to sit on boards and meetings, and um, uh, there's a one, I got to appoint somebody for, you know, some board. Uh, but essentially, it's, you know, it's like a cheerleader spot, push legislation, be an open door policy. If there are citizens that have any complaints, they could come to me. Uh, like Samantha Ramsey, I think, like, you know, definitely police brutality. There'll be a citizen's complaint authority um, that would be going through my office. I want to know about, you know, uh, all crimes. If these jailers are, you know, raping everybody, if they're, you know, going around attacking people and killing and murdering people and nobody's doing anything just because they have official capacity, somebody, a good and honest person needs to get in there and clean that shit up. Because that's bullshit. If you got a bunch of fucking criminal crooks who's pretending to be good people and then they're letting, like, people get raped and shit... Um, in Grant County, that guy got a million dollars because they let him, you know, rape them all night. And, uh, that's criminal. If you can't understand that raping somebody all night is criminal, then you got a, you got a fucked up mentality. Just because you're friends with somebody that's in power, you know, just because you're in power doesn't give you a right to criminalize anybody else. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, so just reverse the roles. Um, is it okay for a police officer to beat the shit out? You're allowed to murder somebody. You see someone that's raping someone else, you can shoot and kill them. And so for j uh, uh, jailers to sit there and think that they can do that type of shit, I think it's absolute criminal, it's absolute bullshit, but if you went, you know, I filed a complaint to the Louisville jailers and nothing was made of it, and, um, you know, what, what the fuck, what the fuck, if I don't have a library book, I have to go through, you know, I have to drive fucking four hours, two days, um, and they already took $130 out of my pocket, and then there's, you know, there's a $30 fine for the book, which if they would have given me a notice, I would have been able to pay it a long time ago, and, um, 
And, and so I have to go through all this fucking bullshit over a goddamn fucking library book. But if you're a cop who kills Samantha Ramsey, if you're a Louisville jailer who rapes the inmates, if you're someone who goes around assaulting people, no crime happens. There's no charges. You don't go before the judge. You, nothing happens to you. Bullshit. You're a criminal. And actually, that shit shouldn't matter. You know, even if they have, like, qualified immunity, that shit should just matter for when they go before the judge. This is a person here that, you know, has five rape complaints on them. This officer here has... You know, five brutality charges on them. This, you know, uh, person here has, and that should be, there should be a running record of all their crimes. You know, I, I, that's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit that people think that if you have a badge, that somehow if you have power, that you're, you're, you could get away with criminality. No, no, no. There's, you know, no violence, no rape, no stealing, no murder. Can we agree on those four things? Please? Can we have a civilization here? Can we actually start to have a civilization? No murder, no rape. No, um, you know, uh, 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 violence and no thieving. Those are like four big ones. There's lots more. The golden rule, doing to others, you have them doing to yourself. And then justice is an eye for an eye. So really, it's just logical, right? Someone takes $100 from you, you get $100 worth of justice from them. And uh, you know, someone's nice to you, you're nice to them back. It's just, you know, it's really common sense. So there's Michael T. Hogan, Whitney Westerfield for the Attorney General, Allison Grimes versus Charles Lovett, the Secretary of State for the Democrats. Um, Michael T. Hogan and Whitney Westerfield were Republicans for the Attorney General. The Treasurer, there's eight people that's running the, uh, for Treasurer. There are more Republicans and Democrats aiming for the Treasurer's seat than there are going for the Governor's seat. Neville Blakemore, James Glenn Jr., Daniel Grossberg, Richard Henderson, Rick Nelson going for the Democrats, Allison Ball. Kenny Imes and John Larson are for the Republicans. Richard Heath, Ryan Quarles are gunning for the Commissioner of Agriculture. And then you have Hal Heiner, Will T. Scott, James Comer, Matt Bevan, Jack Conway, Jeff Young, Gatewood Gabbroth, Drew Curtis, um, who's the governor candidates. I don't know who Gatewood Gabbroth, um, the number two, the second Gatewood, I think Newman, Gatewood Gabbroth, Newman. Um, I don't know who his uh, running mate is. I think he did actually name somebody. Um, he did. And her name is Elizabeth Anderson. So, Terrell Wayne Newman is the uh, Gatewood Gabbard, too. So, Elizabeth Anderson is the lieutenant governor candidate that's going to be running with him, independent. He says he wants to warm the grave. It's not to try to win things. So, I don't know. I think uh, I, I welcome his voice just like I would welcome anybody else's voice. I don't like how he's prostituting the name, but Gatewood is a, a remarkable person. Joe Girth, I bet that pissed Joe Girth off to no end. Joe Girth has been shitting on Gatewood his entire life, and now look, Gatewood Gabbard is back from the dead. You gonna make fun of him again? A perennial fucking candidate, you fucking assholes? Remember how y'all shit on him his entire fucking life? And what did he say about you guys? He said, fuck you, you know, fascist sons of bitches. Fuck you, pharmaceutical, transnational, you know, um... Corporate elites, you know, sons of bitches or something, but fuck you fascist assholes. Um, and all you fascists are bound to lose. All you fascists are bound to lose. So, that's, uh, that's my take on the election right now. So the, the Kentucky's media should be telling you about all these issues. They should be telling you who, um, you know, who they think is the best candidate, who they don't think is the best candidate. And, uh, the Kentucky people should be talking about all this. And we should be, you know, this definitely should be taught in schools. Um, you know, the positions, what do they do? Uh, these are supposed to be people that are for us. So if I have an issue about agriculture, the commissioner of agriculture is going to help me. Secretary of State, are they going to help me do some things? The Attorney General and the Treasurer and the Auditor and the Governor, what do these people actually do for me? Um, I think that's a very important question. So, I'm going to cut this off here. Coming up next, and I'm going to finish this out, I swear, um, the second coming by Yates, and then I'm going to do, you know, uh, just some pieces of news that actually came up. Something fascinating that just happened. You have uh, the KKK is marching in, in Maysville. They're coming out of the Dry Ridge. Dry Ridge has been producing Ku Klux Klan members, and they're in Maysville getting with neo-Nazis and these hate groups. We're starting to see some hate groups rear their ugly ass head. And big shocker, you got Mitch McConnell's talking about war on coal and Obama this and Obama that and how he's an asshole. Um, but basically, it's a southern strategy. He knows there's a bunch of racist people here, and uh, he's been spreading this race hatred. So big shocker that the Ku Klux Klan is going to you know, uh, rise up out of this fucking bullshit hatred. And, uh, fuck them. You know, I'm actually, the, uh, article that I read about them were the crew, uh, the Courants or the Coutants. And they were, um, I'd work with them with the Mason County Beat. If they would have kept me, we would have actually been profitable, but they wound up losing. Um, you know, they wound up going out of business. 
regardless, you know, there's KKK hate in Maysville, and it's bullshit. Someone's honk honking out there. Probably not for me. So, yeah, I'm going to cut this short. But coming up, coming up, some news items. William Yates, and then the powers of the governor. The powers of the governor. There's 20 different departments in the governor's chairs. 20 different departments. And that means that's 20 departments that should be helping you, Kentucky. You, Kentucky citizen, man, woman, child. All 20 departments, all these people, the Commissioner of Agriculture, Treasurer, Attorney General, Secretary of State, and the uh, Auditor, and the Governor and Lieutenant Governor should all be doing something for you. So if you see any of these candidates and they say, hey, I'm a candidate for whatever, they say, well, what are you going to do for me? And you should answer them. You should have an answer. You want me to answer it? Well, I will institute the Sweden's trash to electricity program on day one. Sweden has a program where they take trash and they burn it in an incinerator and they produce electricity. You get rid of the trash in the landfills, you make a use for the trash instead of just polluting and you're creating electricity. What's not to like about this? You're using waste and garbage in order to create electricity and you know my electric rates are absolutely through the roof so um that's a good idea to have you know other alternative energy programs i'd like some solar panels um on my rooftops too but you know first things first sweden's trash to electricity program would be instituted immediately it's just common sense it's actually stupid if you're not doing it and i don't know why we haven't been doing it and uh and you know any good idea it doesn't matter whose mouth it comes out of a good idea is just a good idea and in the great pool of ideas the best ideas should prevail so i'm jonathan masters uh candidate for lieutenant governor and um it is now 6 36 p.m on this day um, Easter, which uh, two days ago, Ronnie Lee Smith actually just died. Some, um, high, it's a high, uh, happy high fructose, fructose corn syrup day, aka happy enzymatic conversion of D glucose to D fructose day, right? Um, tomorrow, Daddy Bush's uh, US Iraq Persian Gulf War ends. So he actually ended the war um, tomorrow, April 6, 1991. And um, they was able to, the patent, for high fructose corn syrup was actually founded on uh, today. So, I'll come back and I'm going to tell you about the news pieces and I'm going to tell you about the, um, the power of the governor. So, thank you.